uh, I will want to welcome you as we go through the session of uh, the financial crisis, connecting it with the uh, end time events in uh, what uh, Christ has uh, portrayed in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 24 and the book of Revelation chapter 13. And uh, if time allows, uh, I'll be able just to connect uh, with the, the book of Matthew chapter 25. But if time doesn't allow, then uh, when uh, God creates another chance, we shall be able to have a, a session on the book of Matthew uh, chapter, chapter 25. And so I'd like us to go to the book of Matthew chapter 24 the book of Matthew chapter 24. And there are some interesting thing in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Maybe some of us have been able to connect them. Some of, uh, some of us have not been able to connect them, but uh, we shall see what um, the Lord wants us to get from the book of Matthew chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of the coming and of the end of the world. So here are the disciples wanting Jesus Christ to be able to show them what shall be the end of, um, what shall be the sign of, of, of his coming and the end of the world. And uh, Jesus Christ didn't separate the two events, but gives a one-time prophecy, which has a double fulfillment. That is uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, as we know in AD 70, and then <clears throat> that destruction being a miniature of what will happen in the end time. And uh, verses four, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. This part that no man deceive you is if time allows what I will deal with in the second segment of the message. But if time doesn't allow, I'll deal with it maybe another time if brother Daniel Mesa gives me a chance. But uh, I want to deal with something uh, in the preceding verses. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Verse six, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, verse seven, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. What I want to deal with is this pestilence uh, in connection with the book of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 13, verses 17, and uh, how the financial crisis is connected to this pestilence that will be there in the end time. Uh, Christ says in the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 11, uh, verses, uh, verses uh, 18, Revelation chapter 11, verses 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou should give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and look at this statement, and shouldeth destroy them which destroy the earth. And so there's an aspect of uh, some people destroying the earth. And this is connected just to the time the nations will be getting angry. And this will be the time that will usher in the time of trouble and then Christ being able to come and reward his saints. And so we have to understand one thing that uh, there are some people who have a plan to destroy this earth. And so, in Revelation 13, 17, how will they try to destroy the earth? Revelation 13, verse 17. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 13, we have the two beasts. 
one beast coming from the sea and then another beast coming from the land the land we know that the first beast is uh, the roman hierarchy more so to be particular the papal uh, 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 the papal uh, part of the roman hierarchy or the roman empire and uh, the second beast that is in revelation chapter 13 is the land of freedom the united states of america which starts or springs forth as a lamb like beast an innocent beast built on two principles the two horns of republican and protestantism the separation of the church and state but this second beast comes as innocent but at the peak of its prosperity it starts speaking like a dragon and it gives life to the image of the beast now we understand that uh, the beast it had uh, the power the civil power and ecclesiastical power but in 1798 one of its powers was broken the civil power when uh, the french general bathia uh, was able to strip it of its civil power and that that was the giving of the deadly wound but we are told that this beast the wound that was uh, uh, wounded will be able to heal and when it heal it will again start persecuting uh, uh, the people of god and so the beast from the land we are told it is the one that will give the life to the image of the beast and we know that uh, uh, the united states of america according to the history and the bible prophecy it will be at the forefront in uh, giving it its hand to uh, enacting of the laws that will, will exalt Sunday sacredness as the day of worship. And so in doing that, we are told in Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of uh, his name. Now, this issue of not buying and selling the financial crisis that is coming, how is it connected to the pestilence of uh, the book of Matthew chapter 24? This is what I will want to labor to bring to our understanding. How is it actually connected to this? In the, in the book of... Uh, Patriarchs and uh, prophets and kings. Prophets and kings, that is PK, page 184, paragraph two. The devil starts bragging in how he will be able to implement Revelation 13, verse 17. This is prophets and kings, page 184, paragraph two. The devil brags that thus the world will become mine and I'll be the ruler of the earth, the prince of the world. I'll, I will so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of contempt. A sign, I will make the observant of the seventh day a sign of disloyalty to the authorities of the earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day Sabbath for fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. So what you find is that the devil is bragging that for fear of one uh, of food and clothing, the whole world will be under his dominion. He, he wants to control the, the buying and the selling, but how will we, he be able to do such a, a thing? Again, in uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6. Uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 17, paragraph 1. I'm just putting some pieces together as we go on and we shall bring the harmony together. 60, 17, paragraph 1. We are told, the light we have received upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood. So everything in regard to the mark of the beast is yet to be known. 
we only know that uh, the mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness. But the prophet says, not all in regard to how these things will be implemented and how it will play about, it is not yet understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. The unrolling of the scroll is uh, 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 the opening of the information that has been hidden in prophecy so that the children of God may really understand what is happening. But most of the solemn work is to be accomplished in our world. The Lord's command to his servant is cry aloud, spare not lift up the voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. So we want to really go into the unrolling of the scroll and see how will these things be implemented. Now, there are many pestilences uh, which are going around the world, some many diseases that uh, some are natural, but some are not natural because we have just read in Revelation chapter 11 verses 18 that men are destroying the earth. But what, uh, how are they destroying the earth? How are they seeking to control the earth? Some of them are through manufactured pestilences. And you may have the information that I want to share on the screen, but some of you may not have the information I want to share on the screen. And I want us to read it attentively because it is something, this is uh, uh, something that um, I was trying to study last year and put a paper together. This paper I have put on the chat group, you can download it because to present this paper, it, it will take around four presentation. And so I'll just pick the highlights in it and you will see how they are trying to use the pest lens to control the finances of the world, to control the buying and the selling and the, uh, and the food. Look at this. And I just want us to read it and understand what they are doing. They say, when it comes to postulating a credible substitute for war, the alternate enemy must imply a more immediate, tangible, and directly felt threat of destruction. And so they have been trying to control this world by, uh, uh, by uh, creating wars and uh, making nations fight against nation and civil wars and all that stuff. But they are saying that uh, wars are not... Uh, making them achieve what they want. And so they are looking for something which is tangible and can bring a more immediate direct threat of destruction. And so what are they saying? It must justify the need for taking and paying a blood price in wide areas of human concern. In this respect, the possible substitute enemies noted earlier will be insufficient. So Whatever they have discussed, and you have to read the paper what they were discussing, they were discussing about the wars, they were discussing about en environmental issues. But they say one exception might be the environmental pollution model. If the danger to society it posed was genuinely imminent, the fictive models would have to carry the weight of extraordinary conviction. Underscored with a note in considerably actual sacrifice of life. And so the, what they want to unleash to the world is something that will have to sacrifice the lives of the people. It may be, for instance, that gross pollution of the environment can eventually replace the possibility of mass destruction by nuclear weapons as the principal apparent threat to the survival of the species. So they think about um, nuclear wars, but uh, they find that nuclear wars will not even uh, bring uh, them to achieve what they want. Poisoning of the air and of the principal sources of food and water supply is already well advanced. So they are also admitting that they are polluting the air. They are throwing uh, uh, poisons in the food and in the water supply. And these steps are in, uh, are in advanced uh, uh, phase and at first glance will seem promising in this respect. It constitutes a threat that can be dealt with only through social organization and political power. It is true that the rate of pollution could be increased selectively for this purpose, but the pollution problem has been so widely publicized 
in recent years that it seems highly improbable that a program of deliberate environmental poisoning could be implemented in a politically accepted manner. However, unlikely some of the possible alternatives. Now, I want you to look at these possible alternatives. Some of the possible alternatives, enemies which have mentioned may seem, we must emphasize that one must be found of credible quality and magnitude. If a transition to peace is ever to come about without social uh, integration. So they have one proposal that will bring this world on its knees. It is more probable in our judgment that such a threat will have to be invented. So this is not something that is natural. When Christ is speaking on Matthew chapter 24, he speaks about pestilences, wars and rumors of wars, but some of them are not natural. They are admitting that some of these things are invented by them. This is the report from Iron Mountain, page 66 to 67 and page 7 to 71. But we continue reading. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, farming, and the like would fit the bill. So these are some of the things that will fit the bill, but they are not done with it. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. So when they bring up a calamity, it will be suggested that this is being caused by humans. And so the solution has to restrict the, the rights of the people so that they may be able to implement what they want. The real enemy then is human itself. Alexander King and Bertrand Schneider, the first global revolution, a report by the Council of the Club of Rome, New York, Fancy and Books, page uh, 1991, page 115. So this is a well-devised plan that they are carrying uh, out. I continue reading that uh, downward, they say that uh, I do not pretend that birth control is the only way in which population can be kept from increasing. So again, they have, they are dealing with birth control. They are dealing with population through methods, uh, uh, different methods. They are trying to control the population of the world. And we know about uh, birth control pills and all this stuff that has to do with the uh, medication. But also uh, we want to see how they are doing this uh, population control. War, as I remarked a moment ago, has hitherto been disappointing in this respect. But now look here, brothers and sisters, what they say. But perhaps bacteriological war may prove more effective. So can you catch that? The only solution now they have is not wars. It is not birth control, but the solution they have for implementing their financial control has to do with bacteriological war. This is, has to do with the, the pestilence that you are speaking about in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 24 and uh, uh, Revelation chapter 11 verse 18 and Revelation chapter 13 verses 17. So they have planned to unleash bacteria which will cause diseases in the air in some countries so that the people may be brought on their knees. Spread throughout the world once in every generation. So they have to spread bacteria in the world once in every generation. And we are seeing what it's being done with the pandemic that we are having right now. Survivors could procreate freely without making the world too full. A scientific world society can be, cannot be stable unless there is a world government it will be necessary to find ways of preventing an increase in population. If this is to be done otherwise than by wars, pestilences, you see that? Pestilences and famines, it will demand a powerful international authority. So through bacteriological uh, war, pestilences and famines, they are saying that they will be able to control the world. They'll have power, international authority. This authority will deal out the world's food to the various nations in proportion to their population. I don't want you to forget about that, the supply of food. When they unleash these bacteria, pestilences, and famines, they are um, trying to control the food and clothing industry so that uh, for the want of food and clothing, 
people may not be able to keep the Sabbath as we have read in uh, Prophets and Kings, page 184, paragraph 2. So look at what they say. If any nation sub subsequently increased its population, it should not on that account receive any more food. The motive for not increasing population will therefore be very compelling. Better and Arthur William Russell, The Impact of Science on Society, New York, Simon and Schuster, 1953, page 103 and 104. And so they say, at last, should we eliminate suffering diseases? Now, this is a question they are asking in their proposal of controlling the world and the finances. Hi, idea is beautiful. One, uh, uh, one, uh, one person called hi, idea is beautiful, but perhaps not a benefit for the long time. We should not allow our dread of disease to endanger the future of our species. This is a terrible thing to say. That is uh, uh, allowing disease to uh, uh, eat up the world population. They say this is not a terrible thing to say. In order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per year. It is a horrible thing to say, but it is just as bad not to say it. Jacques Castillo, United Nations UNESCO Courier uh, of November 1991. And so what am I trying to say is that they are putting together a program and uh, it is to control the finances of the world and uh, the supply of food to the nations by uh, unleashing bacteriological war, that is pestilences and famines in, in the world. And uh, we read in the book of Proverbs 27, just look at uh, Proverbs chapter 22, verses seven. Proverbs chapter 22, verses seven. Proverbs 22, verses seven. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is the servant to the lender. And so what happens in uh, the crisis that we have of bacteriological war, which is the pestilence they're unleashing to the world, is this. Once they unleash the bacteria, or once they unleash this pestilence, what happens is the restriction of the movement of the people. When the restriction of the movement of the people is made, then the food supply is cut off. And then the people have to depend on the government for their survival. Now, if they have to depend on the government for the survival, then it means they have to adhere to the rules of the powers that be. And uh, what happens is that uh, there is what we call recession. For those who have studied finances, we have recession. Recession is when the basic commodities that are used by many people are withdrawn from the people. When the basic commodities are really removed from the people or they are scarce, they are not being manufactured or those who have them, they withheld from the people, we have what we call recession. When the recession happens, the basic commodities are taken from the people, what follows is inflation. Inflation is the hiking of the prices for the commodities that are there. And so we have a recession and then we have an inflation. The end result is a people depending on the manufacturers or the people who are still having the commodities. And um, this is actually a few people in the world heaping the wealth together so that they may be able to control the world. Can we find such a, such a thing in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy? And when we see such a things happening, what do we have to understand? The book of James chapter five. Let us go to the book of James chapter five. James chapter five. This is one of the prophecies in the Bible that has never been considered so much. Uh, the prophecy of uh, or uh, the instruction in the book of James chapter five. Verses one, go to now ye rich men, weep, howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is scangered. This is the financial crisis that we are having so that uh, money loses its value 
and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. So this financial crisis that we are talking about is people, a few people having wealth and uh, uh, having the, the necessities, the commodities or the basic needs of, the, of what the people need and withholding it from the other people. And so this is the centralization of wealth with a few people and the whole populace will be in demand of what the other people have. And so they are doing this and this is a sign of the last days. And so verse four says, behold the hire of the laborers who have ripped down your field. These are the workers which is of you kept back by fraud, cried and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Verses five, you have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton, you have nourished your heart as in the day of slaughter. Verses six, you have condemned and killed the just and he doth not resist you. So there is no resisting what is happening around the world, but um, the rights of the people are being given up and the people don't know how to resist about it and we shall see what will follow our revolutions. And so when these things that are being written in the book of James chapter five, the book of Matthew chapter 24, the book of Revelation chapter 11 and the book of Revelation chapter 13 on the financial issues, when they are happening, there's something that is recorded in the book of James chapter five verses seven. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So these pestilences that are invented by men for controlling the finances of the people, they are uh, things that are bordering unto the coming of the Lord. And so we have to be patient. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. And so while all these things will be happening, the Lord shall start outpouring the showers of the latter rain so that the people of God may be prepared for the crisis that is about to break upon the face of the earth. Verses eight, it says, then be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. All this is, is pointing to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we are told, grudge not one against another brethren, lest ye be condemned, behold the judge standing before the door. So this judge who is Jesus Christ, he is not standing uh, at the door of entering into the most holy place. He is standing at the door coming out because we are told, be prepared for the second coming of the Lord. And so the financial crisis, the invented pandemics and the pestilence that we are seeing, the rumors of wars and wars, nationalizing against nations that are being invented by these people, all of them are pointing to the judge standing at the doors. We hear the footsteps of Jesus Christ coming from the heavenly sanctuary to take his own charge. The question for you and for me is that are we ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ? The prophet talks about this financial crisis. She says uh, this. Uh, she says this, uh, the centralization, centralization, the centralizing, uh, that is uh, education, page 228, paragraph two. Education, 228, paragraph two. This is what we read. At the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all the law, not only divine, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combination for the enriching of the few at the expense of many, the combinations of the poorer classes for the defense of their interest and claims, the spirit of unrest, of riot and bloodshed, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are tending to involve the world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed 
the uh, uh, which converts friends. So this centralizing of wealth and uh, a few people having power to control over others, really what it will bring about is uh, uh, what happened in friends and blood will be shed. This, the saints have to prepare what is happening. And uh, one of the things how they will be able to unleash this pestilence or bacteriological war and control the finances of the world, we are told they are labor unions. And I want us to look uh, at some of the few quotes that talks about labor unions and how they are going to be created. Uh, the end time uh, uh, scenario of the controlling of the finances. We read uh, this in the spirit of prophecy. Uh, I'm reading from last day events, page 117. Labor unions are source of trouble for Adventists. So that men may not be able to buy or they might not be able to sell. How will they be able to control this? It is by forming the labor union so that uh, whoever is not in these groups may not buy or sell. They may not have food or clothing. So she says that uh, the trade unions will be one of the greatest, one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as not been seen the world began. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business, trade unions will be formed and those who refuse to join these unions will be marked men. Because of these trade unions, the confederacies, it will soon be very difficult for our institution to carry on their work in the cities. My warning is keep out of the cities, build no sanitariums in the cities. The time is first coming when the controlling power of the labor unions will be oppressive. And so we find that uh, we shall not be able to work in any way if we are not connected with these uh, labor unions. Again, she talks uh, about these labor unions once again, that uh, through the working of trust and the results of labor unions and strikes, the condition of life in the cities are constantly becoming more and more difficult. This is testimonies to the church volume nine, page 90, paragraph two. And uh, another place she talks about the labor unions, it is in country living page 11, paragraph four. These unions are one of the signs of the last days. Men are binding up in bundles ready to be burned. They may be church members, but while they, are, they belong to these unions, they cannot possibly keep the commandments of God for to belong to these unions means to disregard the entire decalogue. Now, what does Sister White mean when she says that to be part of these trade unions is to disregard the whole decalogue? Because this trade union, their meetings always happen on the Sabbath and the laws are implemented on the Sabbath. So it doesn't matter if you are in these trade unions and then you go in the church on Sabbath. Still, you will be part of obeying what has been approved by these labor unions. And so they will be controlling the markets. They'll be controlling those who do trade and all this stuff. And so this is to control the food and this is to uh, control the clothing industry. Remember, we are talking about the financial crisis we are in. And so let us just uh, look at us a few PowerPoints in uh, what is happening as we speak about these things. The financial crisis and Revelation 13, 17. What is actually happening? World is drowning in debt and it spells disaster for everyone. This is trade talks impossible with the US holding knife to Beijing snake, deputy uh, a minister. So world is drowning in debt and it spells disaster for everyone. And then we are told JP Morgan stop quand one snake's crisis to have flash cri uh, crashes and social unrest not seen in 50 years. But uh, remember the only way they can come to a position they have to control finances is to unleash bacteriological wars and be able to uh, control how people buy and sell, to cut off the food supply so that we may be uh, um, restricted to uh, 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 depending on the government to supply us with what we need. 
get ready for the next financial crisis. While is sleepwalking towards another financial crisis, former UK uh, uh, Prime Minister Brown wants. And are we ready to handle the next financial crisis? I, I don't think we are ready to handle this unless we have some lands in the country and be able to grow our own foods. The next financial crisis will be more severe socially and politically, says billionaire investor the Leo. This is in 2018 before the unleashing of uh, the, the, the China virus. Bill Gates says it is a certainty that we will have another financial crisis like in 2008. How do they know this? While well, they are not prophets because these financial crises are not natural, but they are created financial crises through pestilence and wars. The next recession might be worse than the Great Depression. The world is won. And so when this happens, the Great Controversy, page 590 says, it will be declared that men are offending God by violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. So they, they want to establish a Sunday Sabbath so that the temporal prosperity may come back again. The financial space may start flowing again, but we know that uh, this is a superior Sabbath and not the Sabbath of the Lord. Pope Francis mistrust of free markets. So uh, as this is going on, we see the Pope coming in again, saying that free markets is something that should not be allowed. Markets should be controlled. And how are markets to be controlled? Uh, Sister White has told us by trade unions, they are going to control the trade markets. Uh, Pope warns of a ticking time bomb whose explosion will devastate markets. And so another thing, Vatican offers urge recalibration of financial markets. How do they want to recalibrate uh, these financial markets? Vatican calls for a new regulation of financial activities. So you don't just spend the way you want, you don't just buy what you want. You, you just don't do what you want, but somebody has to control how you get your money and how you spend it and where to spend it also. And so he says, Pope calls for economic, for a new economic order and criticizes capitalism. And so Vatican calls for a global authority to regulate markets. And so these are the things that are just happening behind the closed doors that uh, they will want to control everything that has to do with the finances. Now, as we see all these things happening, what are we supposed to do? Let us read the book of Proverbs, uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. When I reach there, I'll give you a verse. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs 22, and uh, it's verses, verses 19, no, no, no. A prudent man foresees the danger and uh, verses three, Proverbs chapter 22, verses three. This is it. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So the people who are wise should be preparing for what is about to happen to this world. And I told you that um, while all this is happening, there is also something that is going to happen. And this is, uh, I want just to spend some, uh, maybe 15 minutes, if you allow me to go to the next session to go to the next segment of the presentation, and that is deception that is to follow. After they have done everything to control the finances, there is another thing that is in the book of Matthew chapter 24, where we are told, let us go back to the book of Matthew chapter 24, the deception that will be able to happen to this world. Proverbs, uh, that is uh, Matthew chapter 24, and uh, verses, uh, verses four and five. 
When all these things are happening, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and this end shall deceive many. And so uh, in creating this pandemics and pestilence, Satan will appear as benefactors of men, healing their diseases, telling them that he has a solution for all these pestilence. And uh, there's something that uh, when I was reading in the book, Great Controversies, brothers and sisters, it shocked me. And I want us to share uh, about uh, this deception that will go hand in hand with the financial crisis. The book, Great Controversy, it is uh, a very wonderful book. You can read it over and over again. Great Controversy. Uh, I think it is from uh, page 588. Uh, great controversy, 588 paragraph two. Look at this. As spiritualism more closely imitates the nominal Christianity of the day. Let me share it. Uh, I have just realized I have not shared it. Great controversy, 588.2. As spiritualism more closely imitates the nominal Christianity of the day, it has a greater power to deceive and ensnare. Satan himself is converted after the modern order of things. He will appear in the character of an angel of light. Through the agency of spiritualism, miracles will be wrought. The bacteriological war is unleashed and Satan comes as benefactors of men healing their diseases. It says the sick will be healed and, the, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. And as the spirits will profess faith in the Bible and manifest respect for the institutions of the church, their work will be accepted as a manifestation of divine power. So parallel to the financial crisis and the pestilences that are to be released, Satan appears as benefactor of men healing their diseases, saying that now we have this solution for this pandemic, we have this solution for this pandemic. This is how the devil works all the time. The mark of the beast is what we have known it is, but more information has to be unrolled, uh, has to be revealed as the scroll is unrolled. And so Satan tends the air and then comes as the benefactor of men. And uh, again, as this is going on, the prophet says that Satan will form a religious system. Look at what she says. Uh, this is darkness before dawn. Uh, darkness before dawn. And uh, Satan himself will form a religious system. Darkness before dawn, page 33, paragraph two. Through spiritualism, remember this spiritualism has to do with healing the sick also and uh, healing the diseases of the people. Through spiritualism, Satan appears as benefactor of the race. Remember, they have unleashed bacteri bacteriological war, bacteria in the, in, in the air, and the people are getting sick, people are looking for solution, and then Satan appears. And then, as a benefactor of the race, healing the diseases of the people, whether it be through vaccines, whether it be through what, and professing to present a new and more exalted system of religious faith. So. At this point, Satan will create a religious system of faith, healing the people of their maladies. But at the same time, he works as a destroyer. His temptations are leading multitudes into ruin. And so when Satan forms his religious system, God also forms his religious system. And let us see how the Lord will come part this deception in Matthew chapter 24 of a religious system of false healing created by the devil himself, the home missionary. Let us see what the prophet talks about. What will God now do in turn? That is, uh, God also will create a religious system. Satan creates a religious system and God also creates a religious system. Look at this. 
This is uh, the home missionary, November 1, 1897, paragraph 11, for those who are taking the references. Home missionary, November 1, 1897, paragraph 11. She says, remember that we have a financial crisis which has been brought about by the world, Satan and the people who are controlling this world, unleashing a bacteriological war, and then Satan appearing as a benefactor of men to heal their diseases by creating a religious system of healing uh, the diseases, false miracles, whether they are done in the churches, whether they are done by pharmaceutical industries. And God, in response to that, he creates also a religious system. Let us read about it. The church ought to have taken up this work in every conference. And if the powers of thought, which have been so fully occupied in devising plans which cannot succeed and which have not the endorsement of heaven had been put into devising plans to carry out the very work that the Lord has been calling them to do in reaching the people where they are, the work will have been borne by many instead of by the few. This work is the work the churches have left undone. And they cannot prosper until they have taken hold of this work in the cities, in highways, and in the hedges. Which work is this? The angels of God will cooperate with human instrumentalities, and a religious system will be inaugurated to relieve the necessities of suffering human beings who are physical, mental, and moral need. And so, as Satan created his religious system of uh, false healing, God on the other side creates a religious system, which is the medical missionary work of healing the, those people who have mental, physical, and moral diseases, uh, mental, physical, and uh, spiritual diseases. And uh, uh, this is so amazing that uh, the medical missionary is the only agency that will be able to work under the circumstances that we are about to face. We are told in the beautiful book that uh, as uh, religious, as the nation sub subverts, uh, this is a, a call to medical evangelism, a call to medical evangelism. As, as they do this, what will be the only work that can be done? CME 11.4. So Satan has created his religious system of false healing through the bacteriological war they have released, but God also creates a religious system, which is the medical missionary, which is the only system that can work at such a time as this, in time of persecution. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nations, those who will stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have the opportunity to become intelligent in regard to disease, it is causes, prevention, and cure. All those who do this work, this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. The shortness of the time demands an energy that has not been aroused among those who claim to believe the present truth. So the only religious system that will combat the religious system that the devil has created is the medical missionary team, which will be able to heal in the Lord's way. Now, what does Matthew 24, Revelation chapter 11, Revelation chapter 13, James chapter 5 have to do with the book of Matthew chapter 25? What does it have to do with it? It is the medical missionary work. We have read the parable of the 10 virgins, five wise and five foolish. You know, I have studied about this for some time now, and uh, I came to a conclusion that through what the prophet writes, the five wise virgins are the people who are doing medical missionary work. And uh, I want just to finish at this point in showing you that the five wise virgins are actually the people who are engaged in medical missionary work. And this is connected with the prophecy that is in the book of Matthew chapter 24. We, we read this uh, in the spirit of prophecy. 
and uh, I'll just put it uh, on the on our screen so that we may share in this last segment together a call to the last supper. This is in uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume Eight. How is uh, the the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, connected with uh, the book of uh, uh, Matthew, chapter twenty-four, eight T? Absolutely. Let, let me just uh, find it, eight T. Look at this. I want just to connect Matthew chapter 25 and what we have been talking about. We are told medical mission at work. We are in the last portion of our presentation. I know I have taken like 50 minutes and it's long. Again and again, the Lord has pointed out uh, the work which the church in Battle Creek and those who all through America are to do. They are to reach a much higher standard in spiritual advancement than they have yet reached. They are to awake out of sleep and go without the calm, working for souls that are ready to perish. We are reading from HT from page 70. And look at this paragraph. The medical missionary workers are doing long neglected work, which God gave the church in Battle Creek. They are giving the last call to the supper which he has prepared. So the medical missionary team are the very people that are to do the last call to the supper. And she says, my brethren, why do you keep so many things bound up in Battle Creek? Why do you not take the truck and mission work into the cities where there is a much mission work to be done? And uh, downwards, uh, she connects uh, Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25. Please read the invitation to the last to the supper and the last call to be made. Study what is being done to meet the command of Jesus. I cannot understand why such an indifference is manifested. Why should, why you should stand afar off and criticize and draw away? The gospel net is to be cast into the sea and it draws both good and bad. But because this is so, shall men and women ignore the efforts made to save those who will believe and who will unite in reaching that class of whom Christ spoke in his rebuke to the Pharisees. And, uh, uh, downwards, she talks uh, about uh, about Matthew chapter 24, yeah, uh, from this point. She says that uh, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come, but let, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in that watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the son of man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over this household. This is in, she's quoting Matthew chapter 24, to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of, and cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So she has just quoted Matthew chapter 24 from verses 30 to 31 and then 42 to 51. And then she says, brethren, be careful, very careful. There is a work being done by the medical missionaries, which answers to the description given in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verses 48 to 41. So Satan is doing his work of unleashing bacteriological war and then healing the people, but the medical missionary is the only religious system which has to compare Satan's religious system and they are doing the work of Matthew chapter 48, uh, chapter 24, verses 48 to 51. 
Then the Lord is working to reach the most depraved. Many will know that it means Many will know what it means to be drawn to Christ, but will not have moral courage to war against appetite and passion. But the workers must not be discouraged at this. Then she connects chapter 25 with that. Many poor outcasts, even publicans and sinners will grasp the hope set before them in the gospel and will go into the kingdom of heaven before the ones who have had great opportunities and great life, but who have walked in darkness. In the last great day, many will say, Lord, Lord, open to us. This is in the book of Matthew chapter 25. The people who are saying, Lord, Lord, open to us are five foolish virgins. But because they have not been doing the work of the medical missionary, the door will be shut and they will knock in vain. This is in quoting the book of Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verses, uh, verses 11, when, where they come and knock and knock, but God tells them that I never knew you. And then she finishes by saying, we should feel deeply over these things, for they are true. We should have a high estimate of truth and of the value of soul. Time is short and there is a great work to do. If you feel no interest in the work that is going forward, if you will not encourage medical missionary work in the churches, it will be done without your consent for it is the work of God and it must be done. My brethren and, sis my brethren and sisters, take your position on the Lord's side and be honest, active, courageous co-workers with Christ, laboring with him to seek and save the lost. And so what have you been talking for this one hour? Matthew chapter 24, the pestilences and the famines and the wars we are seek, seeing, they are invented things. Many of them are not natural disasters. Satan has studied in the laboratory of nature and he's unleashing these things. And then he comes as a benefactor of people so that he may control the finances. And then he will introduce a religious system of healing the people. But God will also bring a religious system so that they may relieve the suffering of many and they shall do the work of the five wise virgins and then they, they shall be able to reach the poor, they shall be able to reach the naked, they shall be able to reach to those who are in prison. This is the very work of Isaiah chapter 58, which is part of the third angel's message in verity because she says that Isaiah chapter 58 is written for Seventh-day Adventists and it's the work of the medical missionary work. And it will be the work that will help us to proclaim the Sabbath more fully. And so I say this in closing. I'll quote one verse in closing. 1 Chronicle 12, 32. First Chronicle chapter 12, verses 32. This is the last verse that we are reading. First Chronicles 12, 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. It's a time that as a people, we should understand the times that we are living in and what we ought to do. If we don't understand the times that we are living in, we shall not be able to understand what we are supposed to do. And so I pray the Lord that he may open our eyes, that we may hold the beauties of uh, the grace he has given unto us, that we may share with fellow human beings who are in darkness of what is happening at such a time as this. May the Lord bless us, the people who are in USA and other parts of the world, the people in Kenya, that uh, we may come to a time we may give our lives to Jesus Christ so that he may control our minds he may be able to just be at the center and focus of everything that we shall be doing. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us and uh, download the document that I put on the chat message and be able to go through it. And I know you'll get some information, some new information that you have never heard. And uh, the Lord will speak to you on what you are supposed to do at such a time that you are living in when Satan is seeking to control the whole world and uh, lure the people on his side. 
let us uh, offer a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we know that uh, this has been a long session, but I pray that uh, the points we have shared, Lord, they may stick unto our minds and we may continue studying more about these things that the times that we are living in, we may understand and what you are calling us to do. Help us, Lord, to die to self, that we may be able to serve you in sincereness of the heart with a, a heart which is pure. And Lord, after self has been slain in us, then we shall really exhibit the love for thee and the love for the neighbors. And so I pray that you may fill us with agape love in our hearts and you may just show us in which lines that you will want us to work individually and as a church together. Your name be glorified and thank you for revealing these things unto us for we have prayed in the name of the son, Jesus Christ, amen. And so thank you so much. I hand over back to Sister Catherine.